Okay guys, welcome to week four, task number two, which is gonna be your instructional video um, talking about the process of stoichiometry. Um, so while you guys watch this, I definitely would have a copy of the practice problems, whether you go and print them off or whether you go get a sheet of paper out right now and label it chemistry week four task three practice problems because once again as you watch this instructional video i'll be stopping and referencing certain problems and being like okay now would be a great time to answer number one as i go through this instructional video so you're going to want to try to kill two birds with one stone complete task two and task three as you watch this video okay let's go ahead and get started so in task one, the simulation that you guys did, you kind of started off making sandwiches and different types of sandwiches and trying to figure out what combinations you needed of bread, cheese, and I believe meat um, to not have any excess. So I just kind of want to have you pose the question to you guys, like what is wrong with having excess? Um, and so I know with like making a sandwich, if at home right now you've got your three pieces of bread and one piece of cheese, you know you can make one grilled treat, one grilled cheese. And in the end, having that one piece of bread really isn't an issue. But looking at this from um, the standpoint of having a successful business, um, a food truck, for instance, having extra bread that they then can't sell can kind of mess with their profits. So um, it kind of thinking about this idea of the idea of real life application and what's wrong with having excess is definitely going to come into play with stoichiometry because stoichiometry is going to be that math that allows us not to have excess or be able to calculate how not to have excess of a certain product that we want to produce through a chemical reaction. So if we were in the classroom, we would have had a pretty good discussion on what capitalism is and bringing in that idea that it's a political system in which a country's trade and industry is controlled by private owners uh, for profit. And that if you're running a successful business as a private owner, you don't want to have excess because excess, of course, is going to cost you money. And that idea of costing you money is really important especially with margins being um, in some industries um, your margin of profit can be really small and so stoichiometry and having this math to be able to calculate um, how much you need to produce whatever you're supposed to produce or vice versa trying to figure out so you don't have excess is um, kind of actually a really important thing um, I would say of any concept that we've talked about this year, I know a lot of you are not going to grow up and necessarily become chemists, but stoichiometry is um, a type of math that you would use in the private industry if you um, were a small business owner or something like that, trying to make sure that you don't have access or that you can produce what you need to produce for a certain order. Okay, so once again, having this discussion if we are in class. So why is this relevant, right? And that idea that if a company wants to make a profit, they need to avoid having excess. And that if a company doesn't pay close attention to their waste, then the outcomes could be um, that their business isn't successful and has to close. So this now brings us to practice problems. So remember, you guys can either print a copy of practice problems off and answer on that piece of paper you print off or um, some of you guys have gotten pretty skillful with like doing and downloading practice problems as a PDF and then doing a PDF editor okay or just get out a piece of paper right now and go ahead and let's answer question one why is it important to have minimal excess and if you were a manufacturing company why um, excuse me, a manufacturing company would want the least expensive compound or element of a reaction to be the excess reagent. So kind of just take a second and kind of think through that question and how you would answer that. Okay, um, the next couple slides will kind of um, give another example of this, this idea of it if you were a manufacturing company and that you would want your least expensive compound to be in excess. Okay, so here's kind of a real world example. Okay, a patient is prescribed two grams of calcium carbonate. 
Calcium carbonate is just the active ingredient that's found in Tums and would be used for things like heartburn. Um, this patient, however, is allergic to many additives and flavorings, so they can't go to just Walmart and buy regular over-the-counter Tums. Therefore, they actually have to purchase this drug at something that's called a compounding pharmacy. And he and here's a picture of a compounding pharmacy. It's not your typical pharmacy. It actually looks more like a chemistry lab. And this is where this type of company would actually synthesize and make this compound um, potentially on site. And so compounding pharmacies are used and a lot of people have to get their prescription drugs there um, because they are allergic to certain compounds. Okay, so here, once again, is an example from a compounding pharmacy. If I had a business and I needed to manufacture calcium carbonate, okay, I actually could do this through a double replacement reaction of reacting calcium chloride with potassium carbonate. We, through a double replacement reaction, would get a precipitate, and that precipitate actually is calcium carbonate. So this is one way that a compounding pharmacy could produce and compound and actually make this compound on site through a double replacement uh, precipitate reaction. Um, the question is, if you are the pharmacist and you need to make two grams tablets, let's say the prescription was to make two gram tablets and they asked for 10 tablets, like how much calcium chloride and cal uh, potassium carbonate would you want to mix together to make exactly how much you need and prevent having excess um, and prevent having one of these be in excess when you're done. So stoichiometry actually allows us to figure out the math to calculate this in order to reduce excess. Okay, and I also have to plug Earth Day because today actually is Earth Day when I am recording this video. Um, and that something else that's kind of an issue with having excess is especially in manufacturing, if we're producing something that either is toxic or one of the reactants in a chemical reaction is toxic, that of course we wouldn't want to have excess for that just for the idea of trying to keep uh, toxic compounds in our environment low um, just to keep the, elf, the, her, the earth healthy. Okay, so here we have that a chemical reaction stops with when one of the reactants is used up. And you guys kind of saw that in the simulation, the FET simulation you did for task one. Okay, so here's the key concept that gives us the definition of stoichiometry. That stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative. So quantitative, once again, breaking that word down, that means number. Okay, so it's a way to put number. So stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative relationship between the amount of products used and the amount of products formed in a chemical reaction. So to take that whole definition and put it simply, it literally is the math to figure out how not to have excess. And also, it's the math that you can use to determine how to produce the exact amount you need it. Just like with the example from the compounding pharmacy, we needed 10 two gram tablets. Stoichiometry could be used to figure out, well, how many of those reactants you need to mix together to make that final amount. So it's really based on how much reactants you put in, you can calculate how many products you can get out. Okay, I'd now take this time and go ahead and define stoichiometry in your own words. You can toggle back to the last slide. Okay, and this idea that stoichiometry is the math that allows us to determine how many reactants we need to mix together to form a certain amount of products. Okay, the next concept we're gonna talk about is something called mole ratio. Okay, a mole ratio is the ratio between the number of moles of any two substances in a balanced equation. Okay, so it's really important that we have a balanced equation um, to determine these mole ratios. Okay, it looks like my little arrows did not transfer. So of course, this is a these are two chemical reactions where that box is actually supposed to be an arrow. Okay, so if we had a question that says, what's the mole ratio between oxygen and carbon dioxide in the following reaction? Okay, so we can see that this reaction seems to be balanced, and it also looks like that the subscripts it just 
transfer the number and not the subscript. So remember any of those numbers are technically subscripts. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all of my coefficients. Okay, so it looks like we have a coefficient of 10 here, coefficient of 15, coefficient of 20, coefficient of two. And of course, uh, that, those other numbers there are supposed to be subscripted. Okay, so it says, what's the mole ratio between oxygen? So our oxygen, it looks like it's right here. O2 is oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, here's our carbon dioxide. And then it says list oxygen first. So I know you guys are familiar with ratios from math. If we look at this, we could say we have a ratio of 15, that's oxygen's coefficient, to 20. You guys are familiar with the two little dots and that when you read a ratio, this would read 15 to 20. Okay, you also can see with these numbers that this could reduce. Five can go into both of these. So oxygen to carbon dioxide has a ratio of three to four. Okay, and that's one way that we could write this. The other way we could write this is we could say 15 moles of O2 is equal to 20 moles of CO2. Okay, that's the other way that we can write mole ratios. And then we also could write this as three moles of O2 is equivalent to four moles of carbon dioxide. So once again, kind of take this back to making sandwiches and that idea that you need two pieces of bread and one piece of cheese to make one sandwich. And so if we were gonna translate that and have it be the ratio of cheese to sandwiches, we would say, two cheeses, excuse me, two pieces of bread is equivalent to one sandwich. And we would look at how many of each we would need to make whatever the products are. Okay, so let's do this last one. It says, what's the mole ratio between oxygen and water in the following reaction? So hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas gives us O2. And it says, list oxygen first. Well, guys, this is kind of a crick trick question because this reaction is not balanced. We have to balance this and to balance this we would need a coefficient of a two. It's kind of hard to read. Let me try that again. A coefficient of two in front of the H2O and a coefficient of two in front of hydrogen gas. So now that we have a balanced equation, we can look at this mole ratio. It says from oxygen, so oxygen doesn't have anything there. That means it's one. One mole of O2 is equal to two moles of water. Okay? And so we could also write that as one to two, just like that. And this ratio, of course, can't be reduced, okay? Okay, I'm just gonna start off to say the formatting of this slide did not all transfer over. So once again, remember ways that hidden conversion, or the way conversion factors could be hidden, could be hidden with an equal sound, sign the word per, the word in and then a ratio is also an example of a conversion factor. So the point of this slide was to remind you guys that technically mole ratio is an example of a conversion factor. So mole to mole ratio, that means that mole to mole ratio is a brand new conversion factor. Okay, and here's a question for you. What are the other three conversion factors that you already know relate to moles? Okay, and we should be able to get these by name and then also write an example. So the first one, I'm gonna abbreviate it, but Avogadro's number. And Avogadro's number says that one mole is equal to 6.02, I'm gonna abbreviate E to the 23 particles. Okay, it's the way we count small things. So that's Avogadro's number. The other one we have, we call it molar mass and in molar mass one mole of a substance is equivalent to now we're going to use some lingo from class on the back of your periodic table um, it talks about putting molar mass here I'm going to put a 
MQT. That you've got to calculate what that thing weighs and the units of that ended up being in grams. Okay, remember AMQT is a calculation where you take atomic mass of each element and you multiply it by the quantity you have in the formula to then get the total mass. On your periodic table, it doesn't say AMQT, it says is equivalent to molar mass, which you guys know and have to associate mass with grams. And last but not least, we've got molar volume. Okay, molar volume says one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. Okay, those are the conversion factors that we worked with in unit, um, in unit six, okay? Okay, I would now kill two birds with one stone and go ahead and answer what are the four conversion factors related to moles. I just went over the three from unit six on the previous slide. And of course, that fourth one is your new one called mole to mole ratio. And we will abbreviate it and sometimes just call it mole ratio. Okay, and just so you guys know, the way we kind of represent that is moles of x is equal to moles of y and you'll see that on the next slide okay so go ahead and take a second and answer number three and also now that we've discussed mole ratio this being your brand new conversion factor you should be able to go and answer question number four these ones are very much so related to the examples i did a couple slides ago um, so it wants the mole ratio from oxygen to carbon dioxide so you got to find oxygen and carbon dioxide and then it of course is going to say to list oxygen first remember with the ratio um, you um, could reduce it if you wanted to, okay? And it also looks like on this one, in order to get your mole ratio, you're gonna have to balance that equation first. Okay, so I'd go ahead and pause your video and go ahead and answer number four now. Okay guys, so this is a key concept I wanted to review real quick. These were the steps that we taught um, in our chemistry classes for how to solve dimensional analysis problems because guess what guys stoichiometry is just dimensional analysis it's really just unit conversions and being able to use mole ratio as a conversion factor okay we just went and reviewed and you guys wrote down for practice problems identifying conversion factors. So Avogadro's number, molar mass, molar volume, those will be used in stoic problems. And we're also definitely going to need to use our brand new conversion factor called mole ratio. So when I go through and solve stoic problems, I am going to once again follow these steps. Okay, so you'll hear um, some of that lingo that you're probably used to hearing um, with unit six when we were back in the classroom. So speaking of unit six, guys, these are two problems that you guys encountered in unit six when we were doing conversions. This first one says, if I have two liters of water vapor, how many grams do I have? So this would be a unit conversion going from liters and trying to figure out how many grams. Okay, here's another one. How many molecules of water are there in three grams? So converting from molecules to grams. And these are the types of problems you guys learned how to solve through dimensional analysis in unit six. Now let's kind of compare and contrast that with what a stoic problem would look like. So here's an example of a stoic problem. How many grams of iron are required to react with 15 grams of oxygen? Okay, so I want you to kind of notice a difference here. In stoichiometry conversions, it really is in reference to a reaction. And you're given some number to start with that is a certain reactant or product in the reaction and asked to figure out and calculate some other reactant or product. And so where the previous slide just talked about water in stoichiometry questions, one of the first things you'll recognize is it'll mention a reaction and give different types of um, reactants or products. And that's a really good indication of, okay, this is a stoic problem. I'm probably going to, I'm going to have to utilize that conversion factor of mole ratio. 
Okay guys, this slide is golden. There is so much useful information here. So we're gonna go and answer that question. How many grams of iron are required to react with 15 grams of oxygen in the following reaction? So I know not all of you are in my class, right? Mrs. Askew's class. Some of you are in Sordans and some of you are in Young's. But um, to my students out there, this is a Miss Askewism, okay? Uh, this is one of those things that I just kind of say over and over again when I do stoic problems. And it's a saying, I go, grams to moles to moles to grams. I will just say that over and over and over and over in my head because that's how you solve basic stoic problems. You start with grams, then you have to convert into moles, and then you have another step that involves moles, and then in the end, you end with grams. So see this right here? grams to moles to moles to grams. If you read across the top of this conversion problem, we've got grams, we go to moles, we go to moles, and we go to grams. And even though these last three steps are conversion factors, this in my head is the little voice that keeps talking every time I solve a stoic problem. Okay, I have grams, next I go to moles. Okay, next I go to moles, next I go to grams. And it's this constant, grams to moles to moles to grams. Now, let me say something really important. We are gonna see some examples that don't start with grams. It starts with liters. Okay, well then it's liters, moles to moles to maybe liters, or maybe to grams. It depends on what the question's asking, okay? But this idea of having this key concept in your head, moles to grams to grams to moles, is going to be really, really helpful in being able to know what comes next in these stoic conversions. Okay, and so um, I want to go and put some names really quick. I'm gonna delete all of my writing so far and I wanna put names to these conversions. Okay, because once again, super important, mole, grams, excuse me, to moles, to moles, to grams. Let's kind of look at what this looks like, okay? So in this problem, it says how many grams of iron are required. So when I really look at this problem, it says question mark grams. This is really asking and wanting me to solve for iron. How many grams of iron are equal to 15 grams of, not Y, but of oxygen? Okay, so this is really asking me how much, how many grams of iron do I need to get 15 grams of oxygen, okay? And so we can solve this by plugging in three different conversion factors. This first conversion factor, one mole of Y is equivalent to some number of grams of Y. Guys, this is molar mass, okay? I've got that right here. We start with grams, then we use our conversion factor of molar mass, one mole of O2 is equal to the mass in grams of O2. So I'd need to go look at my periodic table, which I have this memorized, but oxygen's mass is 16, and 16 times two, because it's O2, would be 32. So this is the, you have 16 grams of oxygen, you have one mole. So that's gonna be the first conversion factor we plug in. Okay, this next conversion factor is our mole to mole ratio. Where, where'd that go? Is our mole to mole ratio. So I would need to look at a balanced chemical equation of this reaction to get what these numbers are. But here's where I'm gonna change from O2 to iron. And then in the end, we're gonna do molar mass again, except not molar mass for iron. It's gonna be molar mass excuse me, not molar mass for oxygen, but molar mass for iron. And I would, I don't have iron's mass memorized, so I'm gonna need to go reference a periodic table to get what this is. But this really is just simply grams to moles to moles to grams, and going from grams using molar mass, and then using the conversion factor mole ratio, then using molar mass again to get our final answer. Okay, on this next slide, I'm actually gonna go through the steps and solve this problem. 
Okay, he, here's our problem. Let's do this. How many grams of iron are required to react with 15 grams of oxygen in the following equation? I recognize this as a stoic problem because we've got two different reactants versus products. Let's actually look at this balanced chemical equation. Four irons react with three oxygen two molecules to give us iron oxide. Okay, and we can see that this reaction looks balanced. I'm going to go ahead for help and just highlight, oops, highlight my coefficients here. There's iron's coefficient, there's oxygen's, and there's iron oxide's coefficient. Okay, and so we've got our balanced chemical equation. Now I'm going to talk through the steps of dimensional analysis. Step one is what is the question asking for? This wants to know. Mm, let's do black. <laughs> How many grams of iron is equal to 15 grams of oxygen? Okay, so you guys also know my silly little saying, grams to moles to moles to grams grams to moles to moles to grams. So this is how I talk through this in my head. Okay, I have grams. I need to plug, a con plug in a conversion factor that's going to get me to moles. Here's my grams, I gotta get to moles. So I literally go and write mole on top of here, okay? Well, if I have gram in my numerator, that means gram has to be down here, and it has to be grams of O2, and that's gonna be moles of O2. Okay, so here's where I now plug in. I have to recognize this conversion factor as molar mass, and so I plug in my numbers. One mole of O2 is equivalent to 32 grams of oxygen gas. Now, some of you may be like, where in the heck, Miss Askew, did you get 32. Well, let me show you. Okay, so I pulled up a periodic table. Oxygen's mass is 16. And if oxygen weighs 16, what's O2 gonna weigh? It's gonna weigh 32. So that's how I got 32. Okay, is because if I were to take and do an AMQT for how much oxygen weighs, 16 plus 16 is 32 grams. Okay, and then going through our steps of dimensional analysis, technically grams of O2 cancels, and the units I'm in are in moles of O2, which moles of O2 does not match grams of iron. So once again, talking through my little grams to moles to moles, my next step is I've got to plug in another conversion factor and it's going to have mole on top. Okay, and this next conversion factor is our brand new mole ratio. Moles of O2 is on the top, so that means moles of O2 have to go on bottom. Okay, and now we have to look at our balanced chemical equation. Now, here's where you know you're trying to get to iron. So we've got to do a mole ratio from oxygen, which is on our bottom, and try to get to iron, because that's what the question's asking us for. So the coefficient for iron oxide is not important in this at all. We're trying to get to iron. So looking at this mole ratio, we've got a coefficient of three in front of O2, and a coefficient of four that goes in front of iron. And now we have our mole ratio step. Okay, I am going to need to zoom out just a little bit to fit the rest of this. Okay, and let's do this. Just to give myself a little more writing room. Thanks for your patience. Okay, there we go. Now I think we can fit this. Okay, so once again, my funny little saying is grams to moles to moles to grams. Here's grams looking across the top. Grams to moles to moles. Now our last step is we got to get back to grams. And so here's where we're going to use the 
conversion factor molar mass again, except it's not gonna be for the molar mass of oxygen, it's for iron. Because we still gotta follow our rules. What's on top has to get canceled on bottom. So we're gonna have moles of iron be on bottom. And silly little saying, grams to moles to moles to grams, we're gonna have grams of iron have to be on top. So now once again, we know according to the conversion factors we already know that one mole of iron is going to be equivalent to iron's molar mass, which is 55.8. So that was 55.8 grams. Let's go back, cancel units, moles of O2, moles of O2, I, moles of iron, moles of iron, and now what we are left with here is literally this. I'm gonna draw it as a large fraction. How many grams of Fe is equal to, we've got the number 15 times the number one divided by 32 times 4 over 3 times 55.8, point's not very big, point 0.8 grams of Fe divided by 1. And all of you have the math skills to be able to then plug this into your calculator to get the right answer, okay? Also remember that you can look at this as a large fraction. And honestly, this is what I kind of drill home if I'm in the classroom. Do it as one large fraction. Okay, so just rewriting this once again to make it easy to see what you end up plugging into your calculator is 15 times 1 times 4 times 55.8 grams of Fe divided by 32 times 3 times 1. Now I would times across the top Get your answer, write it down, times across the bottom, write that number down, then divide. Okay guys, this brings us to now the stoic calculations. Number five, I just solved for you as an example. It is the exact same problem that I did on the previous page. I'm just not gonna plug it into the calculator and get your answer, and that's what your teachers are really gonna pay attention to when you turn this in. You make sure you square your answer, and of course our answer should be grams of Fe, and you guys gotta get that number, okay? Okay guys, we're also gonna require that you show your work. Now I just did all the work on the previous slide, but you've gotta go back and write out those steps. How many grams of iron are equal to 15 grams of O2? And we've gotta see those conversions. Okay, and then your final answer. Okay, let's go through another one. I'm gonna do this one a little quicker than the last one. How many grams of lithium nitrate will be needed to make 250 grams of lithium sulfate? Lithium nitrate, lithium nitrate, 200 grams of lithium sulfate, lithium sulfate. So those are the two things we're gonna be looking at at in this problem. Assuming that you have adequate amount of lead for nitrate to do the reaction. Okay, we gotta balance this, okay? So I'm gonna look at this real quick and one lead, one lead, four nitrates over here. So that means I probably am gonna have a four here. We got now four lithiums, four lithiums on this side. Gotta have four lithiums on this side. So I need a two here, okay. That makes me now have two sulfates. Sulfate, oh, two sulfates. One lead, one lead. Double check it, one lead, one lead. Two sulfates, 
two sulfates, four lithium, four lithium, because two and two is four. Okay, we're balanced, okay? Okay, so now let's go through our steps of dimensional analysis, okay? Remember with these, you know my little sayings, grams to moles to moles to grams. That's my silly little saying, but it helps me know the steps I need to do. Okay, so now going back to dimensional analysis, what's this question asking for? So this says how many grams of lithium nitrate, there's lithium nitrate, will be needed to make 250 grams of lithium, copying its formula down, lithium sulfate. Okay, so first connection, we're already in grams, right? This gram is that gram. So now I gotta get to moles. So I gotta plug into my conversion factor and I need to get to moles. Oops, where'd my O go? Moles of Li2SO4, okay? Grams in numerator, we know grams of Li2SO4 have to go on bottom. So this conversion factor is known as molar mass. This is molar mass, grams to moles. And that conversion factor says one mole of lithium sulfate is equivalent to the mass of this. We're gonna need to calculate that. Okay, so let me go grab a periodic table and let's do an AMQT chart to figure out what that weighs. Okay, let's figure out what the molar mass of lithium sulfate is. So I'm gonna go through all the steps. This is a great review. Okay, so what's, what is its atomic mass, quantity, and total? So we've got lithium, we've got sulfur, and we have oxygen. Let's see here. Lithium's atomic mass is 6.94. Okay, got that right here. Okay, let's find sulfur, and there's oxygen, let's move it down, okay, here we go, sulfur, 32.06, oxygen, nice soul, 16, okay, now let's look at our quantity, gotta move my Peri oops, my periodic table over just a little, whoa. My periodic table over just a little bit. It was LA2, so quantity here. Two lithiums, one sulfur, and there are four oxygens. Okay, we're gonna have to get out our calculator. Now to calculate this. Okay, I got 13.88 here. This would be, of course, 32.06. And we got 16 times four gives us 64. And now I gotta add those all together. So 64 plus 32.06 plus 13.88 gives me a grand total of 109.94. Okay. One. There we go. 109.94. Fit it in there. Okay. So. That's my mole. Now I gotta go to mole again, right? We got grams to moles to moles. I've done grams, I've done moles, back to moles. So we got mole here, and here's our new conversion factor, mole ratio. I know I've got moles 
of Li2SO4. And here's where I'm going to go from moles of lithium sulfate to now lithium nitrate. So Li NO3. Okay. And if this is the conversion factor that we know as mole ratio, we get these coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. And so for lithium nitrate, nitrate is a 4. And for lithium sulfate, sulfate was a 2. 4 to 2. Okay. Let me pause real quick and make some room here. Okay, so I know that moves our coefficients, but now I got some more room. Okay, so last conversion. We've done moles to moles. There's that moles. Now we got to do our last one in grams. Got to come back to grams. And so here's where you know what you have in your numerator. Moles of lithium nitrate. We're going to put that on the bottom here. Moles of lithium nitrate. And we know one mole of lithium nitrate will be equivalent to that many grams of lithium nitrate. But we need to do an AMQT for this and figure out what this weighs. So I think I'll have room to do this. Actually, let me just grab a box and we'll just do it in a box again. Okay, so A, A, M, Q, and T. We've got lithium nitrogen and oxygen. Let's go grab a periodic table. <laughs> so lithium 6.94, nitrogen 14.01, oxygen is 16. Looking at our formula, it was one lithium, one nitrogen, and three oxygen. So let's get our totals here. 6.94, 14.01, and 16 times three, 48. Now get our total, 48 plus 14. 14.01 plus 6.94 gives us a total of 68.95. Okay. Okay, so back up here. Let me actually erase this a little bit. Here we go. And we've got 68.95. Okay, I'm going to cancel some units with my eraser. Look, grams, or I'm going to try, grams of lithium, grams of lithium, moles of lithium sulfate, cancels with moles of lithium sulfate, moles of lithium nitrate, cancel with moles of lithium nitrate, and now we kind of can see what we need to plug in, but I once again will write it nice and clear. Okay, so here we go. We've got how we're looking for how many grams of LiNO3 are equal to 250. Now times 1 times 4 times 68.95 grams, and we still have our units here, LiNO3, then divided by, whoop, oops. oops, move this back up just a little bit, sorry, divided by 
109.94 times 2 times 1. Okay, so then plugging this into the calculator, we get... So when I plug that all into my calculator, I got that this was equal to... 313.6 grams of lithium nitrate and that would be my final answer for this example problem okay guys so here's your number six and you're kind of probably starting to notice a pattern here the last example I did was the exact same problem same chemical equation okay so I balanced that for you on the previous slide, except this question is a little bit different. It still wants you to know how many grams of lithium nitrate are equal to not 250 grams, but this is 565 grams of lithium sulfate. So that first number is a little bit different. So um, once again, you're gonna use my same steps. I just changed this number, that's all I did. Okay, and you're gonna have to show your work and show those different conversion factors that you plugged in, okay? You know you are at grams, you gotta go to moles, then to moles, then to grams. Understanding that honestly, this problem is exactly the same as the last one and it's just we're starting with a different number and so you're gonna have to plug that into your calculator and make sure to once again square your answer. Okay, so good luck with number six. Okay, so far we've done two stoic problems that were grams to moles to moles to grams. This problem though has liters involved, but that same little process, it's instead of grams to moles to moles to liters, this asks how many liters do you produce and it's asking for and you're starting with liters so this is going to be liters to moles to moles to liters to solve this problem okay but we're still going to go through those same things this is still going to be um using those conversion factors you're already familiar with okay so let's go ahead and try this one so how many liters of water Vapor are produced if you start with 3.5 liters of oxygen gas. Okay, so once again, we started with liters. There's our liters to liters. Now we got to go to moles. You know you got liters in the numerator, so liters of O2 has to go on the bottom. And we're trying to get to moles. Once again, liters to moles to moles to liters. There's our mole on top doing so good so far. This though, this conversion factor is one mole of a gas is equivalent to 22.4 liters of oxygen gas. Okay, so I actually like these ones better because you don't have to go and calculate anything with molar mass and you just get to use liters. Okay, so now we got to do our next conversion which is still gonna have mole on top, okay? And this is our new conversion factor mole ratio. So we know we had, and we're working with moles of O2. So we're gonna have moles of O2 on the bottom here, and we're trying to get to H2O, so we're gonna put H2O on the top, okay? Let me say this real quick. With your mole to mole ratio, you wanna go from what you your unit you start with to the unit you're trying to get to. So we know we're gonna look at our balanced chemical equation and look for what our coefficients are in front of oxygen and, excuse me, in front of water and oxygen because that's what this problem's asking for. So it looks like we've got a ratio for in front of oxygen. It's one mole of oxygen. Oops, let's do that in black. One mole of oxygen is equivalent to two moles of water. So we got a two to one ratio there, okay? Remember this one came from there being a one there, and this two, of course, comes from that two. Okay, so look, liters, moles, 
to moles. And now our last conversion, we got to get back to liters. And here's where we know we have moles of O2 on top. So we have to have moles of H2O on the bottom. And once again, this is pretty simple. One mole of water is equivalent to 22.4 liters of water. Okay, which is pretty nice that we have equal number of particles um, with gases at STP. Okay, so now let's make this look pretty. And I'm gonna erase some units. Okay, moles of O2 cancels with moles of O2. Moles of oxygen cancels with moles of oxygen. Moles of H2O cancels with moles of H2O. And we're left with liters of H2O, which is exactly what this problem's asking us to solve for. And honestly, well, check this out. This is kind of nice too. Mathematically, technically, 22.4 is in the numerator and denominator. And if 22.4 is in the numerator and the denominator, that means mathematically it can cancel too. So I literally could cancel that out. We got one, so we can cancel that out. And we honestly could do this math in our head, which is exactly what I'm going to do, but I am gonna write it pretty. 3.5 times two times our units, which was liters of H2O divided by one. So pretty simple here, uh, 3.5 times two um, gives us seven liters of H2O would be our answer. Okay, and you've kind of gotten this pattern. Number six, excuse me, number seven is just like the one I did on the previous slide, except I think I had 3.5 liters. This one is just three liters. Now, some of you in your head are probably good at math and you know the answer is six liters. Okay, awesome. Okay, you still need to go and show all of your work in order to get this task with what you turn in. So make sure you write out those steps because, you know, this is all the practice you're going to get with Stoic. And Stoic is a hugely important concept in chemistry. So take that time, follow the previous slide, um, but just manipulate your numbers. Okay, and here's the very last example problem I have for you. It says how many grams of barium chloride are formed from 10 moles of barium uh, chlorate. So if we look at this problem, we've got a chemical equation that is not balanced. I'm kind of glancing at it and we're gonna see if we can't balance it pretty easy. So I'm first looking over here. Okay, I got six oxygen. I do not have six oxygen over here, so I'm going to add a coefficient of three here. Now I've got six oxygen, got two chlorines, I got one barium. We're balanced with just that one coefficient. So now that we have a balanced chemical equation, uh, we know that these would just be one of each, and now we can go ahead and set this problem up. Okay, you guys have heard my little saying, grams to moles to moles to liters, or liters, moles to moles to liters. Well, we can get pretty hoo -hoo, crazy with this and it could be a problem that starts with grams and ends in liters or a problem that starts in grams and asks you to end in moles, which is kind of like this one. So still go through those steps, even though you guys know my little saying is grams to moles to moles to grams. Let's look at this problem. This problem does say how many grams of BaCl2 are equivalent to 10 moles Ba, comma, Cl, O, 3, 2. Okay? This problem, though, doesn't go from grams to grams like it was before. This starts at mole. So literally what that means is you have skipped. That means this problem's easier. It means we've skipped this first gram and we're already starting on mole. And so that means the only thing that we have to do is now go to mole. And since we're already in mole, this first conversion factor is gonna be our mole ratio. 
So we know that in our numerator, okay, we've got moles of BaClO32. So let's get this down here. So it cancels BaClO3, parentheses 2. And on top would be moles of B. ACL2. And guys, make sure you see that this, this is in the numerator, right? I just didn't write it all. I don't want you to think of this actually as a fraction, right? That's on top of our numerator. Okay, so now looking at this balanced chemical equation, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, and now here was our first mole. There's mole. Now I got to get to grams if I'm talking through this in my head. Moles to moles to grams, which is going to be our final answer. Well, we have mole. Let me adjust this real quick. Give ourselves a little more room. Okay, here we go. Okay, so... Well, <laughs> let's get back to our pencil. Moles of BaCl2 on bottom, and we're trying to get to grams on top of BaCl2. And this conversion factor is molar mass. And molar mass says that one mole of that substance is equivalent to what barium chloride weighs. So I'm going to go grab a periodic table, and we're going to calculate that. Okay, so this is an example of where I'm not going to do an AMQT because I can figure this out in my head. This one's not too complicated. This has one barium, and one barium weighs 137.33. Can I have two chlorines, and chlorines over here, chlorine weighs, oop, let's get back to my pin, 35. 0.45, and I know I've got two of those, so plugging this into my calculator real quick. I got 208.2. Okay, now we can clean this up real quick to be able to plug this into our calculator. Let me get rid of this periodic table so we can see what's going on. On. Okay, so moles, whoop, erase, moles of that, cancel with moles of that, moles of barium chloride, cancel with moles of barium chloride, and we're left with something that's actually pretty clean and easy to see. 10 times 1 times 208.2 grams divided by 1. And so I think me doing this in my head, this moves our decimal point, and it's going to be 208.2082 grams. Barium chloride is our answer to this example problem. Okay, once again, you guys have kind of seen the pattern. Same exact question, but I'm giving you some uh, different numbers. So once again, write it out. Balance the equation in what you submit for your practice problems. And if you've made it to the end of this video, right, this is a lot of math. And so I really wanted to take time and explain this as um, well as I could. Okay, um, you've got a couple other problems now to try to solve on your own. And we understand that some of you struggled with mole conversions and you're going to kind of struggle with these. So what we've done is we've given you some hints. This is hint. This is like problem five and six, which I did problem five and six on this um, lecture capture. 
Okay, and um, number 12, we give you a hint. This is going to be a grams to moles to moles to liters. So we want you to try these problems and do the best you can with the rest of your practice problems using those other problems that we already gave you as examples. Of course, you guys are free to email, me, email us um, with any questions you have. Um, of course, in class, we would have done a ton more practice with Stoic. We would have had a lab involved with this where you guys would have had to do some math to figure out how many products you form and then actually go through that um, in the laboratory and see if you could produce that amount that the math said that you would be able to produce. Um, so I know that this is kind of an out there concept, but it is a concept that is extremely important in manufacturing and chemical engineering and even places like the compounding pharmacy um, that we have here in Flagstaff on 4th Street. Um, so good luck and finish up those last couple practice problems and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit.